Underground World, what's the deal? It's your boy Pofsky, Andrew Mason, the one and only. And we are here today with a very special guest, also our first time in the new set yep. at Underground Production Studios. We're here with the one and only, RJ, Mr. L.A., man. Or Jay. What's happening? <laughs> it's cool, what's happening? Everybody will think that. <laughs> They was there see me in the motherfucker. Uh, see me in the streets, be like, hey, do that, hey. Right. That's exactly <laughs> one of the first things I offer, or that I asked you, like, yeah. where that ad lib come from. Like, why don't you tell the people just a little bit about uh, where that ad lib even come from? Just to try to try to impress the room and come up with some dope shit. You know, it was in the uh, that, 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 the time frame was uh, probably like I want to say two thousand. 13 or something like that, maybe around that time, 13, 14, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just in the studio, wilding out. Yeah, you and it just stuck, saying, though. Yeah, right? I used to say haze a lot and all that shit. You know, the, you know, you know, being fly, you know what I'm saying? And it just it just came into something. And I'm like, everybody was loving my ad-libs before that, you know what I'm saying? Because I had the RJ before that. The RJ! You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Everybody was loving it before that. But then I just... just you know, more so like, oh, you like that? <laughs> Let me try to do some more ad libs. <laughs> Absolutely. And it was in the studio, it was in the booth, you know what I'm saying? And motherfucker was like, you heard that? You heard what he said? <laughs> he said, hey, hey. <laughs> I was like, oh, y'all like that? <laughs> some simple ass shit, but they just like fucking with That's fine. Yeah, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? It was a vibe, though. And that was like way back when. And then that's be actually before I started even dropping, that was before I dropped tapes and shit. Okay, well. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't know if it was Amio One, something like that. I don't know. It was around that time though. So how long before the first Amio tape came out were you like rapping and and what were those like early early days of RJ like rapping? Was it just with your homies smoking or like what? How yeah, old were you? Like give me a original like story like that. Does it know? go back to high school? Yeah. Okay, yeah, way back for high school. <laughs> well, we were, you know, we some real official rappers so you have to be an official you have to you know what i'm saying experience this shit and you know what i'm saying and, and like t from the womb type shit you know what i'm yeah. saying mm -hmm. but um rapping i've been rapping before i you know could understand rap i was just rapping and then um as time progressed i just kept doing it you know different rappers started getting in you know what I mean? Being famous and being more famous and being more famous. And it was like, damn, this shit's kind of dope. You know what I mean? When you're a kid, you know, you think about kid shit. But then when you experience that real rap shit, you be like, damn, this shit dope. So I started getting more into it. So I write, writing more. I used to write crazy. Just be writing all the time. And then, you know, just kept going. And just kept getting into that motherfucker shit and studying the, the science of it. You know what I'm Who were you studying at that time? Like when you're honestly up, like you listening to? Honestly, I know this is called like the underground shit, but I was more so on mainstream acts. I mm -hmm. wasn't all the way tapped into underground at that time. I was like more so like in mainstream shit. You know, for me, Snoop Dogg. That's who. You know, what I'm saying my mom would be playing Snoop Dogg and shit. So. That's how it really, you know what I mean, went crazy. You know what I mean? Into yeah. my system. You know what I mean? If that's your first artist, you, you know what I mean? That <laughs> exposes you to the to the feeling and the, the vibe of hip hop, then you know, you gotta be elite for real. You know what I mean? You gotta sure. think about it. How long I've been in the game, like 10 years. So, you know what I mean? Think about how, how long Snoop been in the game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. He was actually one of the ones I was talking to that, you know what I mean? made me feel like I could have some longevity into this shit. You know, so the way he was like conversing with me, it was like, damn, you're talking to me like I'm one of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Do you remember like the first time yeah. you met Snoop Dogg? Like where was that? How old were you? Fuck. Um, I think I recently met Snoop Dogg um, after my career started. I didn't meet Snoop yet until then, until then. That's why I was so in so much like awe, like, being around, I'm like, man, this nigga is a real person. Like, fuck, this nigga showing me, nigga, championship wrestling belts and shit. Like, this nigga <laughs> is showing me the motherfucking, uh, the million dollar belt, nigga. 
Ted DiBiase, nigga? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, what? Million dollar man? Nigga. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? That shit was kind of different, though. You know, it was a vibe. Yeah, like I said, he was one of the ones that just kind of talked to me. Like, I was like, elite already. Like, I'm supposed to be even bigger than what I am. Telling me I should do certain shit, and like what I should be involved with, networks, and what should I, you know? Just walking me around this compound, shit like that. So it was crazy. So it was cool. It was like surreal meeting somebody who you met on TV. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, everyone, I For feel sure. like Snoop. Everybody kind of feels like that. You know, you feel like you know him already. I yeah, never met right. him once, but I feel like he would recognize me for some reason. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, like exactly, like <laughs> exactly. No, that makes sense saying? for sure. He's such a big figure out here. Yeah. And then for him to recognize you, I mean, you're obviously a big figure in LA too. So obviously, he's caught on to what you've done for years. I'm sure. Yeah. So I'm sure like that recognition from him probably still hits. Just like when you were starting in the game, right? Most definite, most definite, most definite. He, uh, he's great. He great, man. He's a legend, a living legend. That you know, one of the most famous, well, the famous, most famous person in the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Straight up. That's that was dope. Though. It was like uh, the game that he delivered, and then him being me just asking him to be a part of my show at the Nova, hmm. and he like, yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. Now listen, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you tomorrow too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this isn't just right now. This ain't just on your TV show, my boy. We finna hit you. Like, nigga, I, I, I'm gonna answer, nigga. I'm gonna pull up. Yeah. I'm like, all right, my boy. That's big. He did that. What? Pull right up. Wow. That was one of my biggest shows at the at the Nova. When was that? That was like 2000. Say 16, 17 from that from 16. To, oh, no, not 16, from 17 to 18 around there. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 20, 2017 to 18, 18. That was around there. But yeah, one of my biggest shows, Schoolboy Q came out, Snoop Dogg came out, uh, uh, YG came out. Um, OT, man, do the, do the recap. That motherfucker, it was some people there. It was some people there. Uh, and, and I appreciate all of them, too, because, you know, they don't have to, you know what I'm saying, be a part of the a part of history with me. They yeah. can just be a part of their own history. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty dope, though. You know what I mean? To embrace me, you know, embracing a moment like that. You know what I'm saying? To me, yeah. embrace me while I'm embracing Mr. L.A. Yeah. Absolutely. We all from L.A. Right. You call yourself Mr. L.A.? You yeah. know what I'm saying? It could be like that. It could exactly. be like that. Right. But I think the world don't think we like that. I think the world don't see it like we see it. Yeah. I mean, I me think, being from L.A., I would see yeah. a lot of you guys be very, a lot of camaraderie yeah. in the L.A. scene, which yeah. is beautiful to see. You know? Definitely. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, <clears throat> when you look at like the Snoop Dogs, Dr. Dre's, Ice Cubes, and then kind of that next generation, the Nipsey Hustles, the YGs, the RJs, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you feel being from the West Coast? Like, there, you got to have just like a different kind of passion being from the West Coast, right? And mm-hmm. like, when people talk about like West Coast music not getting the love, like, I don't know, just speak on the whole shit. Like, how do you feel being one of these pillars in West Coast hip hop, you know? Um, okay, so. Being a pillar in West Coast hip hop feels uh, like just do. Like, okay, y'all embracing that. You know what I mean? Y'all embracing that. Like, y'all want me to be king of the West. That's what y'all want me to be. Like, what? Okay. I wasn't thinking about that, honestly, but since you want that, for sure. It's just nobody else to take it, you know what I'm saying? Right. For yeah. sure. I'm going to be lyrical. I'm going to be, I'm going to make songs, hit songs. We. This is. Um, uh, like a rhythmic, um, you know, uh, region. It's a rhythmic region, so I make the jingles too. You know what I'm right. saying? That's what something I was telling you earlier. Like, yeah. music's very catchy. Like, yeah. you can rap your ass up, but you also making hit records. Yeah, and that's what separates a lot of artists. Most you know? definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I do that. You know what I'm saying? Just that's what, that's what y'all want. That's what I prepare for. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Is being from the West Coast, I, I would assume that as an artist, like you guys are always kind of seeking validation in, in one 
way or another is getting people like Snoop Dogg to fuck with you and really, really have these this empire of LA rap behind you a validation for you in a sense was there kind of a moment you were like ah, I feel accepted here yeah most people seek validation from the internet right I got validation from people that they look up to <laughs> that's amazing yeah, right. that's, that's another feeling I said that's stepping into a realm that that you dream about you know what I'm saying it's totally. damn near imaginary you know, okay. and and like being that, being a part of it is being him. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it's, 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 that's what's up. It at at a one at one point, I got a com I got comfortable, but I didn't get comfortable because um you know I was just you know fat and eating and all that shit. I'm rich and shit. I got comfortable because nigga it was. COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you know what I'm saying? It's like 2020. We're not doing nothing. Nobody's doing nothing. I'm putting out projects, and it's not. It's not what people want. You know what I'm saying? People. It's not it. Let me post up. Let me go tap into the world. Let me see what's going on. When they open us back up, I'm gonna come correct. But people will think. Man, you took a long ass break. You was you was comfortable. You took three years off, and no, my nigga. Everybody just forget that there was a whole like <laughs> no, worldwide my, pandemic yeah, yeah, for so, two years. Yeah, yeah like my nigga. how how do you feel now making music? Do you think you've improved by actually taking kind of that time away and having COVID? Do you think that that time to yourself made you rebuild, come back better? Yeah, I do. I do. I feel more equipped. I feel like I'm, you know, ready for everything. Everything to come, even, you know, whatever's to come. We're not gonna speak on nothing, but whatever's to come my way, I'm ready for it. Um, I feel like can't nothing break me. Because if it do break me, and I shatter, you know what I'm saying? I got people around me that's gonna pick up the pieces. You know what I'm right. saying? You feel me? It's gonna be right back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready, like I'm strong, I'm rebuilt. Um, not saying like I fell off or nothing like that, just more so like watching the game. You know, sometimes we have to be full student and not the teacher. So we gotta kick back and watch and be observing. That's one of my best qualities. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting back and watching and seeing what's going on. Oh, this is what the world want. Not this is what RJ want or this is what LA want. Oh no, this is the world like, okay, this is what the world want. And I'm a, I'm a speaker, I'm a voice. You know, people will look at me as a prophet. The things I speak on and it come to fruition and, you know, you know, just by being tapped into the universe and being tapped into society, what's going on, they, they call me a prophet. I'm just really in tune, you know what I'm saying, with, with what's going on. And, you know, I had to. I had to, like, step back and watch everything you know, and scope it, and be like, okay, now it's my time to jump in. It's like double dutch. I don't know how to play no double dutch with the bitches, though. You know, so. <laughs> Gina views. Yeah. Gina, G I know she's a double dutch. Yeah. But not for sure. Knowing the right kind of time to just strike and the way to go about it and shit, and, and even, like, speaking about the stuff we was talking about before, building kind of the, the empire that you're building now, right, with yeah. even some of the artists yeah. and just, even like you said, hiring marketing people and learning. Yeah. It's like, yeah. speak on that a bit, like taking yeah. that CEO position and what's that look like? Oh, for, for the longest, I, I relied on my talents, on my music. That's what's gonna get me wherever I need to be. And I'm only focused on my music, whatever, whatever. I don't know how to promo. I don't know how to promote my music. I know how to rap and be RJ, Mr. LA, you know what I'm saying? But there's people who do know how to promote music. There's people who do know how to market, that that, that um, excels in marketing, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Nipsey Hussle, he was one of the greats that knew, that was an artist and, you know, knew marketing, he was good in marketing. He actually, um, you know, side note, he actually, before I dropped Amio 3, he was telling me he wanted to market it, but really? if I had got to him too late, and it was a lot going on, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and then I, I couldn't, I, I was, man, I had to go get that money, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> I dropped that motherfucker, go do a nigga big concert, I need that be sad, you know what I'm saying? But, um, 
But back to the, uh, the question, like, it's it's hard being an artist and marketing yourself. You got niggas like Chris King that just market himself all the time and just find ways, just trying to pick at shit, just trying to find something that's just catchy and just catchy, cut on. Oh, you like this? Let me do this again, or let me do something else. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's like, that's, it's not easy. That's an actual skill. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, we damn near, like, if you were an artist and you're good at marketing, I think you are you damn near need, like, two paychecks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I damn near think niggas need to pay you double. Whatever they give you, like, and whatever the label give you, give you another set of money just for you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because that's a skill. That's a talent. And, um... I don't know that how to do that as well as others, you know. Mm -hmm. I just know how to be a great ass rapper. But and being so, that a hundred percent in made you who you are today, right? Like if you weren't a hundred percent, but it's next level though. Yeah. It's next level now. Now you gotta adjust, right. you know. And uh, one of the keys to this game is adjusting and adaptation, right. and adapting to what's going on. Right. So, you know, all right, well let me go hire this person over here that cares about me, or cares about my career, cares about my my um my music, you know what I'm saying, a fan of my music, actually listens to it, yeah. and not just nigga just trying to get a check, you know yeah. what I'm saying, they, they, they're they through thick and thin, that's what's gonna crack off, somebody who believe in you, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and then you just, you know, I, let me just put some money in their pocket, you know, once this big, once this bag come, let me, let me pay them, put them on payroll, of course. and let me build this team, they say, uh, one of the, you know what I'm saying, like, being a boss is, having employees mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying facts like like they even say about politicians like it's not about being the person who knows how to do everything the best it's about recognizing where you need help yeah. and filling that role most yeah. definitely That's the knowing how to surround yourself boss. around right people exactly. so as you're yeah. coming into just our new drops we'll get into new stuff coming up in February. Oh yeah, most definitely. But Gotta get in there. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, you, do you feel like you kind of finally have that Team RJ as you were putting it earlier? Yes, I do. I do. I feel like finally in my career is Team RJ and I'm the focus where, versus just me and Lemmy. Yeah. Or me and Lemmy and then me and Mike Wayne and I'm getting ideas and we just fishing off ideas and we just going off of that. You know, like now, um, you know, Lemmy even has his own team that he's building, you know, and it's under this Amio regime, and we're just pushing it that way, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you know, Lambs might need somebody to be he, over here. He got to be 100 places at one time, you know what I'm saying? Might need somebody to be over here, be over here, be over here. Okay, let's, you do this, you do that, let's go. You know what I'm saying? All right, we brought this money back. Huh, that's your brat, that's your bag. Let's move forward. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm just building like marketing, creative designer, stylist, um, everything. That's you know what I'm saying. They or oh, somebody you know working my Instagram. Like, but all right, hey, you think we should drop this? Yeah, I think you should drop this. But we should we should say this. But, all right, let's come up with a caption. You know what? I, I'm the rapper. Let me come with a caption. Oh shit, nigga, it was, it's raining. I'm wearing Travis Scott. So, oh shit, I let it rain on my Travis today. You know what I'm saying? Like just yeah. little clever shit. We just all working together and just making that shit crack. If I, you know what I'm saying? Oh y'all don't like that idea? Well, let me come up with another, another idea. And also, like me being the boss, I have to be blunt, not blunt disrespectfully, but I gotta be direct and transparent. And they, you know, people. For around me have to understand that um, I'm, I mean what I'm saying and I, I get the final say so but I do need you you know I do need your creativity I do need your your work ethics I do need you to be a one early every time I do need that you know and you know what I'm saying but I feel like as long as I got a steady head on my shoulders and not um, disturbed by the chaos I feel like everything of my team would be all right, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, I, I that's most important. My mind, my mind, say my mentality and where I'm at in life and what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Is my money right? Is my kids right? My family? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Am I am I okay with God? You know, God. You know what I mean? Damn, I lied today. I did I support cause, but fuck, I gotta repent for that. You know, shit like that. I feel like as long as I'm 
align, you know what I'm saying? Like just with this universe, I feel like everything will be okay. Right. Because, you know what I'm saying, like I'm the vessel, you know? And everything goes through me, you feel me? And I go through, you know what I'm saying, through this tunnel, you know what I'm saying? So like, I gotta be, my mindset gotta be okay. Has right. to, you right. know? So what do you do to keep yourself in a good mindset? Like, do you like to hit the gym or what do you like? I'm about what to is start outside of music? Guy. Yeah, you yeah. um, know. Shit, man, my routine is fucking these bad bitches. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch tape. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, actually, like, no, actually, um, I, I, I'm, I'm getting into breathing. I'm, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get my breathing right. Um, um, I gotta exercise more. I have to, um, you know, write more. You know, just I gotta um, be around people who's uh, just as vibrant as me. You know what I mean? And I also have to like um, be high vibrational myself. You know, like when people ask me questions and shit, like instead of just brushing niggas off, like answer their question. You know what I'm saying? When people ask me questions, I'll just be like, yeah, for sure. That's like a little vibrational. Yeah. You know, so. It's not serving anybody good, even yourself. Yeah. At that point. Type. You know what I'm saying? For so, sure. so like that. That is important. You know, I've been, um, you know, I gotta read more. Um, I gotta do a lot. I just, uh, I'm just motivated though, bro. Just mm -hmm. motivated. Like, just motivated to be like the best that people think I am. You feel me? People like, I'm, I'm motivated to, um, be everything they perceive of me. That makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Like, just be that, you know? It's just, it's, just, it's fun again. It's, it's been fun for a minute, but it's just real fun right now. Like, damn, y'all like this outfit? Fuck, let me go, I'm about to bust another one. Like, yeah, yeah. like, what you think about this one? Like, it's don't shit mixed with this and that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Like, how I put it on be fun. How I put together the raps be fun. Me just calling my tape the bitch tape is fun. It's interesting yeah. because it's like, what? The audacity. The, it the is visual like, you showed catchy. us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Crazy. Let's, let's, the whole let's album. Ta let's talk mm -hmm. about the tape. Oh, the, yeah. um, the bitch tape. Um, we drop in February 15th. That's um, It's not actually Valentine's Day, but it's side bitch it day. It's the day after. Right? Yeah, day after the side bitch day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, there you, go. you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but we dropping that um, February 15th. We, we we working on dropping the, uh, another single on Valentine's Day as well. Um, we working on dropping, we gonna drop on February 2nd, this new single that's about to drop called Just A Fuck. We gonna drop that shit uh, uh, February 2nd. Song and video, that's ready to go. Look like, to look like Michael Jackson himself. You know what I'm saying? He saw it before, yeah. he saw it himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, that, that idea just came from me having a, a, a grip of, just like an ample amount of female records and not knowing what to do with them. Mm -hmm. They just didn't fit my projects. It was so many, like this song gotta go, this song, song sound good with this song, you know what I'm saying? And it just formed that way. And I'm just like, oh, I'm just driving. Like, man, you know what? I'm about to call this shit the bitch tape. Mm -hmm. It's just how I talk, it's how I speak. I don't mean no disrespect, I don't mean no harm. Um, I, just, I know it's derogatory, but, but, you know, bitches call each other bitches, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Would I, would I, uh, somebody asked a question, would I want my daughter to, uh, man, listen, my, I want my daughter to be free. I want, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's real. I want my daughter to be free to what she, whatever she own. I don't want her to be um, caged by words. Right. A slave to, to, the, to the words, right. to the wordplay. Of, of, of other people can say this that it's like that's so boxed in like yeah you know what i'm saying i say nigga a lot i don't think it's the most the, the, i think you know from where we came from i don't think it's the best word to say but that's what i say yeah you know i've been saying that since a young nigga you know what i'm saying so that's what i say i'm, I'm more wiser now so i could not say it but I, that's where i'm free at that's why i'm right myself at what i let somebody else say it, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I would feel, you know what I'm saying? That's why, because I, I say that to say, even with bitches, like, would they let somebody else call them a bitch? Probably not, Right. you right. know what I'm saying? But they say it also, you know? 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? Some white bitches, black bitches, Asian bitches. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? That they all say they all call it themselves a bitch. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think I don't know. I just felt like saying it. I just felt like calling my tape that. And that's what I want. That's what I'm on. Some people feel like calling they tape nigga what? Purple rain. Shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, that's different what strokes like. for different folks. Though, you know what I mean? But I, it, yeah. but it's just a female record that that I played for many females and many women love it. Shit, I played it for feminists and they love it. So right. if I can get past them, I think I'm winning. For sure, for sure. And something that's sick too is that even I feel like I'm just predicting here, but you dropped this tape seemingly catered towards women. I feel like whenever you drop a song like that. Dudes fuck with it too, yeah. you know. You seem to have yeah. that ability to cater to both, which not a lot do, especially in LA where it's very, I think, like kind of male-driven, dominant. It's hard for girls, I think, to really fuck with it, and I think you stand out. Thank you, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, they, that's the that's the goal, though. You know what I'm saying? You, you wanna you wanna play with the words, like instead of saying. You just a bitch I'm fucking on. You want to say you just some shit I'm fucking on. You know what I'm saying? It's just a play on words. And I feel like as long as you get your words savvy, then, you know, everybody can feel it. You know what I mean? Like, cussing somebody out sound better over a beat. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? By way, yeah. A rant sound better over a beat. You, but when you rant on Instagram or something like that, they just be like, God, right. <laughs> here you go again. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you put a beat behind that motherfucker. Let these motherfuckers start putting uh, putting beats behind they uh, put background music behind they rants. Right. Them motherfuckers gonna start go they gonna get put on TikTok shit, yeah. and they're gonna start getting money behind that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's hella funny. I'm not gonna. <laughs> no okay. cap. Something sick in LA that really I think went crazy in December 2023 that you had the chance to be part of was the big hit. Album. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's okay. where we have re I tapped in with you not Shout too out long big ago. Hit. Shout out to Big Homie. Shout out Big yeah. Hit. Shout out Big Hit. You were on you, just one song on the album, right? Yeah, Red Lotion, Red which Lotion. you did the video for at the, at the yeah. Bottom Monk release event. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, when did you first get tapped in with Big Hit? Have you known him for a while, or did you just kind of recently meet him at, when he got uh, out? He shouted me out on Instagram in a song, like a freestyle or something. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure who tagged me. Uh, it might have been Hit Boy that tagged me. Uh, Cause I don't think he even know how to use Instagram yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he ta somebody tagged me and I um, tapped into it and I started tapping into him. I'm like, oh damn, this bro pops. And then um, who uh, I think um, people have been coming up to me saying I need to pull up to the studio. But you know, I don't just be pulling up like that on just anybody. Like all the, you know, you gotta. I don't know. I don't just pull up on niggas. You know what I'm saying? I, one of my problems with my collabs or not being too friendly with um, different artists or not just being in a bunch and shit like that. Like I rarely just like pull up on niggas. I don't really like know for real. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I think I need to get out of that too because at the end of the day, it's like I could lose out on a lot of opportunities. Like, fuck it, like, just, you know what I'm saying? Go, we're artists, so we do need to just, like, merge more and you know, collab more, you know? Right. But, but um, back to uh, Big Hit, um, some uh, K-Boy actually hit me up and was like, oh, man, you need to pull up. And, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with Big Hit. I'm like, okay. He was doing some shock aware shit for Brie Carter. Mm -hmm. And me and him, was, we was all doing some business and shit, so. I'm like, I'll fuck around, you know what I'm saying? I pulled up instantly, instantly. It's it was going just, crazy, huh? It was just like a, you know what I'm saying? Cool shit, like instantly, like nigga, oh, I'm a fan. Woo, woo. I'm like, damn, it's crazy, like, you know? He, um, he, he a dope person though. He really is. He a dope yeah. person, man. He, he he got a story to tell, and I, and I'm sitting in there, we rapping, we rapping, and he's just telling this story. And I'm sitting there like, wow, we we got somebody that been to jail, came back, made it home, because it's hard to make it. It's hard to, it's about, you go to, it's coming back. Right. 
you know? Right. It's coming back home. And then dealing with that, how are you operating with society? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. him back in, and him, um, yeah, I'm looking at him like, damn, bro, we got somebody who's a living testament. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where we don't want to be. Right. Let's be honest. You know, we don't want to be there. Yeah, but sometimes yeah. um, the the cars we're given, the way we deal them, that's where we land up. Because right. it's a system. You know, the, the judicial system is, you know, we, we all know. We all know what's going on. So it's serious. My mama uh, and my, my parents and always told me, like, don't get in the system. Just whatever you do, just don't get in the system. Stay far away from the system. That's why I don't got tattoos and shit. I don't got tattoos. You don't have any tattoos? Yeah, that's why. Like, I don't got tattoos because when I came up, right, I was in the streets, like, and I'm trying to, like, I got led to the streets. It's, you know what I'm saying? We hear the music, you know? Yeah. But, um... I was always just more it's like savvy. I was always thinking ahead, like if I get pulled over, I don't want them to know where I'm from. Yeah. I don't want them to know, check my check me for tattoos. I don't want them to be, I want them to make me look innocent as hell so they can just yeah. keep me going. You feel me? Oh, he ain't nobody. Real. They really doing that shit. Yeah, sure. they checking tattoos, they shit checking, you know what I'm saying? See what's going on, you high, what's going right. on? Like, I mean, when I, when I was coming up, yeah. I, I ain't really been, Put over like on that level in a minute, you know right. what I'm saying? God forbid, you know what right. I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like when I can recall, you know what I'm saying? When I when I was on that, I was just more so like, let me be smarter than everybody. Let me not go the route that they going. Let me let me let me do this over here. Let me let me get a job and sell work. Let me you know what I'm saying? Let me let me let me play the game more. You feel me? Because it's chess. It is. You know, and we gotta play that motherfucker as is, you know what I'm saying? So, I was just always on that. I was always on like two steps, three steps ahead of time. Like, what am I doing? What's what's going on? That's why it took me so long to even be a rapper. I didn't really start rapping like you know, on the scene to everybody until I was like 24. Really? 26, something like that. That's when I started telling people I'm a rapper. Like, now I'm a rapper. Listen to this. Damn, this nigga hard as a motherfucker. Fuck you get this nigga from? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you just kind of kept it to yourself and it popped out when you were ready. Yeah. That's why I was even started rapping. I started rapping because I couldn't talk to nobody. Hmm. I had to vent somewhere. Yeah. I had to vent to something. And I couldn't talk to people in the street because I didn't trust nothing that was going on for real. I didn't trust me. I didn't want to land my, I didn't, I didn't want to go to jail. My, my dad told me that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to go that route. Let me do this way. It was right. You know what I'm saying? That's all I ever wanted to be, niggas, is like bigger than life. Ever, forever. Whatever I'm doing, I'm gonna be bigger than life. My mama said, whatever you do, be the best at it. And that's what I was on. That's what's in my head, my in my mind, embedded in my brain. Be the best at it. Whatever I'm doing, I'm gonna be, you know what I'm saying? Street nigga, I'm gonna be the best street nigga. Right. Feel me? I might not, I might have missed out on some of them plays, but I'm still on the streets. I might have missed out on some of them motherfucking, some of them, them risks that, you know, make you a millionaire. I might not have been doing it up, all the big chains, and oh, damn, I miss it. Damn, oh. Uh, but I'm on the streets though. Yeah, I mean you're doing what you had your. I'm your on the streets though. It's yeah. not. A, it's not a game. Yeah. When you in them streets, don't play like it's a game. If you are gonna take your risk, don't play like it's a game. They watching you. There's cameras everywhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was cameras before it was set up. The cameras were set up. There was cameras. Why you think, nigga, we getting caught up like that? Then people telling and all that shit. The game fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So you you always just want to be better. If you dealt them cards to be like, you know, in the streets and have them to do what you do, like man, just just be better. Just be better than 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 who you dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Be better than who you around. That's another thing. You gotta keep everybody around you on ten. You gotta watch your homies homies. You know what I'm saying? Being being an artist, being a being a boss, you gotta watch who your homies friends is. Yeah. You gotta watch who your brother's friends is. How they treat them. Are they treating them just cause just to be around you? You know what I'm saying? Right. Or are they treat or do they just really fuck with them? Right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta watch who watching you. Because niggas watching every day. That's crazy. Every yeah. day. Every single day. Somebody's watching. They pick up the phone, they watch. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta be ahead of that. You gotta be watching everybody, like, nigga. Nah. You, you know what I'm saying? You know if somebody if somebody fuck if some this your this your boy. 
he got he got another homie or he got somebody else that that fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? You gonna know how if they if he really fuck with him or not. Of course. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gonna know like this nigga really fuck with you. All right, all right for sure. Yeah, okay. No, then if he do, then you've embraced him too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Show that love. All right for sure, cause I I fuck with you through this. My, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with you for fucking with my peoples. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. You know what I mean? But you gotta watch everybody, bro. It's 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 hard because you don't know people's motive and shit. Yeah, like That's as good thing. as those situations can be when it's like your homie's homie, you embrace them as cool. Yeah, those yeah, can also man. be like the opposite of that, where it could they could be plotting, they could be just there for the wrong reasons, like yeah. you said. So. Yeah, the yeah. the wrong people around you can really soil like what you doing. So it's just important to have that shit on lock for yeah. sure. Now, for sure, for sure. with the big hit song, the feature you had, did you know that you're gonna be doing that video that night at Bottom Bunk? No, <laughs> so, no. I'm curious if it was planned out. Man, these you... niggas be calling me uh, like the day of. That's another thing too. Like nigga, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that though. I'm gonna stop nigga. I'm niggas can't. Call me the day of no more. I, I want to be like... We need like five day notice. Yeah. I want like a five, maybe a week notice so I get right. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be the best. So I want everything to be on point, but it's for Big Hit, man. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Nigga. I mean, and it right. turned out great. I mean, I, I think That's Big that's Hit, good. man. I don't give a fuck, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Say, like, but you nah, can't... Like, yeah, because you can't just call me like that. You can't just call me and just be like, RJ, pull up, nigga. We got the video. Come on. It's Chris King. It's my nigga. It's my boy. Like... You can't just call me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we gonna, he gonna call me, nigga, pull up, regardless. But what I be like, hey, we gonna shoot the video? All right, no, we need this, we need this, we need that, we need that. Hella peculiar. Nah, <laughs> nah, real shit, you know what you I'm saying? You gotta keep it to that standard. That was, that was big hit, you make exception for big hit. Nah, head. because big hit is it's just more so like, um, nigga, cool. I called this nigga. Hey, Chris, come on, nigga, we about to pull up. <laughs> We going against, yeah, we going against nigga, our, our shit, we stand it up, man, for big, for big hit. Shout out big hit. Legendary <laughs> night. And that was a moment, right? It's like, in those nah, moments, you can't not embrace those moments. Nah, it right? was. They actually, nah, they, nah, they didn't call me, they called me like a day before, two, two days before, though, honestly, though. He did call me like before that. And he, um, and, and I was like, I think I was like fucking far. I had my son and my daughter. I had, I had to do some shit for them. Um, and it was calling me all day, I'm like, like, bro, we right here, bro, pull up, bro. I'm like, I'm coming, nigga. I promise, I'm coming. Nigga got like, nigga, late as fuck. He like, bro, man, bro, nigga, you gonna get a DP, bro? I'm like, this nigga is crazy. I'm on the way, though. I'm like, nigga, I'm sliding, bro. And we, I got out there though, pulled up, hit this nigga Chris, like, nigga, come on, fool, we about to, we about to slide. Nigga uh, slid up there. That shit was a good ass video. It was lit up. It was cool. We got there. This nigga drunk as a motherfucker doing push ups in the video. <laughs> yeah, <he's> doing, yeah. <laughs> this nigga, nigga, he doing burpees, nigga, in nigga in the middle of the party. Yeah. Nigga, he doing burpees, nigga. Yeah, then, 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 uh, then the other homie start doing uh, mother. Yeah. 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 The other yeah. homie start doing burpees. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, these niggas just programming in the middle of the party. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. it's different. I was you know standing right there with you and yeah, DJ we're in that Charisma. Corner. Oh God! Yeah, shout out to DJ oh, Charisma. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! That was yeah. legendary. That was the that craziest was. event. That was crazy. Yeah, that was. Straight up. I didn't know the party. I know it was gonna look like that and feel like that though. It right. was different. That's it felt so cool. natural and just yeah. genuine. Like, yeah. like we were kind of talking about earlier how there's just the oversaturation. There's a yeah. lot of people out here today and doing stuff. It's very commercially. That just big hit movement and that drop on that album was just so Shout out real. Big, yeah, yeah, raw. It was dope. Shout out big hit though. He's, uh, it's still some 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 females, some women in my DM from that. Uh, <laughs> it's still some women messaging me from that party, man, from that video shoot. Shout out big hit. Uh, yeah. Now we we gonna ask you about something because a lot of the people watching this might even been at the event. Mm -hmm. It was. Time about a month or about a year ago came out to Ventura. We were there. It was a DJ Trey, Devin Smith. And I'm just curious, do you remember that leak that was in the ceiling? Like it was raining that night and it was leaking all over you. Yeah, and I felt like a rock star. I remember yeah, thinking you had the what the Louis towel or some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, the red. I had the red Louis towel. I felt like a rock star. Yeah. I, nigga, what the, the leakage made it even more nigga hole in the wall. Like I the, felt like the old observatory at that point. Like yeah, we going thicker. Because I thought to go up. Right. We get the 
artists of your caliber may come through there where like, oh, the leak, like this may be a problem. Yeah. But you did totally embrace it. You were like going under it and yeah. like, it just added to the energy of the whole night for sure. That's crazy, that's nasty. <laughs> when you think about it, nigga, I'm just going out of I'm like, nigga, I'm going. It was so hot in there, though. I remember yeah, it, it was I steaming. Totally sweat through my hat it was night. steaming. It was, bad. it was steaming. It yeah. was steaming. Yeah. I had the jacket on. I had the scarf. I don't know what I was on. Right. Man, yeah, that shit. I, it, the whole moment, though, just sliding through the, the crowd when I um, came through the entrance. Mm -hmm. Parted. Super legendary. Parted. Man, it was a. Man, it was epic. That was a dope moment right there. You know what I'm saying? That was fire. That was fire. Brought me back. And yeah, that was cool. We went up, whole motherfucking room shaking. So you sold it out, hundred percent sold it yeah. out. Yeah. And you did a whole set. Like I really commend you for that. It was yeah. like a club, so you could have just came and did three to five songs at the most. Yeah. You definitely did like fifteen songs. Yeah. Just, you know what I mean? Like your whole shit. Like, yeah. That was my first really time in tour. Right. As many shows I did in California, it was the that was the first time being in Ventura performing. I you, think so. Yeah. Yeah. But um, how was the second show that you guys did there? That was for Halloween, I think. Was that the new project, the Amio Girls tour? It was, I think, yeah. right? It was. How was that tour, and how was your next time back being in the 805? It was. It was. It was dope too. That was dope too. That was dope. I had fun. On oh, everything, I had fun. I had um, who we brought out? I think we brought out Bree, Bree Siete. You had Asia, right? A Asia, did she come? I don't know if I brought out Asia. Yeah. She was on part of the tour though. I think she right? was like probably like two, two dates. Okay. Yeah, that was cool. That was when cool. That was a cool little tour. I was straight. You know what I'm saying? It was cool. Have you toured like out of state a lot? And like in the past, like, yeah, man, I've been everywhere, bro. I've been all over. Like I've your been. own headlining tours and shit. Yeah, I've been all through the all through the West. Yeah, it was dope and everything. How about like the East Coast? Like, do you ever get any East Coast love? Do you have you ever worked with like East Coast artists or anything like that? New York or yeah. even Miami artists or anything? Yeah, I, um, I performed at the same. Yeah, this, you know, a little, damn, yeah, I perform, I don't know how to say that, but, um, yeah, I fuck with the, I fuck with the East, yeah, I fuck with the East for sure, can't spell the West without the yes. Right, I just heard that, I just heard Snoop say that shit. Is there, like, a Only. city, a random city in the country that you or your team are like, oh, we're getting, like, a ton of love in Houston, Texas? Yeah, like, or some random Is there a random state. city that you think holds down RJ hard? Yeah, let me see. It was uh, Utah. <laughs> That's fire. The Mormons. <laughs> Mormons love our day. Yeah. <laughs> it was Utah. Utah was crazy. Japan was crazy. Japan was so crazy because, like, I'd do a show, I and they would scream every word, word for word. And then when it's time for the meet and greet, they couldn't even, like, say like can I ask for a picture like right. you know what I'm saying but they know the words they didn't know English to to speak to you but they're like singing me. along and shit yeah, yeah. That, that was crazy, crazy. when did you perform in Japan um fuck that was like I had did a tour in Japan it was like uh 2018 2019 no 2017 the end of 2017 I think yeah. was that by yourself or were you with another artist shout out Charisma Charisma took me out there Charisma yeah. Lincoln yeah, Charisma, uh, I, I link with Charisma, and uh, we had a, a a plug named Shu, that was his name, and he showed us around every everywhere, um, showed us the culture, um, had us, you know, eating the food, different foods, trying the different foods, and you know I had to ask the question, I'm like, man, what's up, like, what is this? Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, y'all be... Oh, the desert. You yeah. cooking the desert. <laughs> he, like, he like, nah. He like, nah. We yeah, don't. He, he, he like, spoke nah. English and shit. Yeah, he spoke yeah, English. Man. He like, nah. Like, One thing about Japan. Like translating and shit. Like, yeah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a translator though, for sure. He was actually translated too. You know what I'm saying? But he was, 
Yeah, he, yeah, he, he showed us around everywhere. Shout out Shu. Um, uh, what I want to say uh, about Japan? Japan is actually like one of the cleanest places I've been. No trash on us on the streets. No, no crazy shit. Just excess amount of homeless people and things like that. You know, it was like real clean. Like I didn't even see trash bins on the street. Yeah. And there's no trash. I don't know what the fuck they do. Is they trash? Yeah, how the fuck they <laughs> use eat it or something. Like some kind yeah. of shit going on. Like, I don't know, but it was like cool. Everything real small. Everything tinier. Like mm. the trucks. I'm looking at diesels that was like mini diesels and shit. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Mini trucks. What do you think of the food out there? Are you, the food you is like the good food? as fuck. And you like like sushi and the stuff like that. Food is fire. Yeah. No cap. It's fire. I ain't gonna lie. You cooking it. Yourself and shit. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of places okay. you're cooking that shit yourself Korean and shit. Barbecue vibes and shit. Type vibe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just, you know what I'm saying? Cooking that, chefing it up and shit. That okay. shit was fire. Do you have like an LA food spot that you could shout out that's like your favorite place? Like, where are you eating? Maybe you and your family? Where you guys like? I don't have no, I don't have a favorite spot. Like, right now, I mean, shit, that is spots that we go to. Shit like that. But you I, don't want I. To burn them out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah. Me. Nah, but. <laughs> Uh, um, one of my boys that I just got hooked on is not even from LA. It's a food truck. But shout out all the food trucks that we do know. Trap Kitchen, you know what I'm saying? That's my nigga, you know what I'm saying? But my boy Memphis Wings. Memphis Memphis Wing with love. They got a food truck right here downtown. Because I'm downtown now. So I'm yeah. I'm downtown, so I just go to all the downtown spots, like LA Cafe, all that shit, whatever. You got the Boston Over right there. Yeah, just yeah. different little, um, um, you know what I mean, sushi spots and shit like that. Yeah, uh, that's a gang of shit. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, it's another uh, little Italian spot called Amante right down the street. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. But, um, man, the Memphis Wings, man, the motherfuckers fire. He right there off, like, 14th Street and fucking Hope or something like that. Yeah. On a fucking one way, he got the food truck right there, chefing up the chicken wings, and they like whole chicken wings, so they fire. Oh, he got like the the Memphis Gold style. He got the jerk, and all that shit, man. I'm like, my, my my, I'm on this little fruit diet, so I'm fucking myself up right now. Yeah, I'm hungry as hell right now <laughs> too. Man. Fuck, you're on a fruit diet. <laughs> you're on a fruit and veggie veggie diet right now. Oh wow, how yeah. long you do something like that for? Um, shit. <laughs> No, they say it's only good to do it for like three or four days or it start fucking with it, fucking with your brain. Uh-huh. I'm on day six. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Yeah, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking yeah. with you. That's no, this good. like my last, <laughs> <laughs> this my last day. This is my last day. This is my last day. This is my last day on it. So, um, but nah, yeah, Memphis go. We ain't shot off them. They got a food truck right there. But um, it's a gang of different places, though, that, you know what I'm saying? Um. I gotta always shout out We Jamming, you know. Um, I always gotta shout out pe- people I fuck with, you know. They got yeah. spots and shit, um, especially on platforms like this. Um, yeah, uh, if I'm missing anybody, my bad. Oh, um, I ain't motherfucker. Oh, we be sh- we be having chefs pull up and shit. Shout out, shout out, uh, chef, uh, chef Rock, chef, chef Rock, yeah, J Rock, chef J Rock, yeah, yeah, my boy. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. It's a gang of little spots. You know what I'm saying? Hard. We need a little RJ yeah. food show or something. Yeah, yeah the food talk marketing. My boy, yeah. you know, my boy just had a, uh, he just got a fucking, um, what's it called? A restaurant. It's called Stratus in Hollywood. Uh, it's Jamaican. Okay. Yeah, I want to try that. I want to try it. I want to try that out. Yeah, that shit fire. Because you're funny in front of a camera, like you doing some sort of food review, like trying that spot for yeah. something. That would... It would go well. Hell no. Nah. Everything is going to be the food critic. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. They're going to be like, RJ for the show fell off. This nigga doing food reviews. Nah, I'll fuck with you. That would be hard. Nah, I'm fucking around. Man, nah, I don't know. I don't know, bro. There's so many things that I could do. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's unlimited. And there's so many things I could do. One thing Snoop told me I need is a network. I need my own network and shit. And he told me that shit. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking into that. Just having different things. Podcasts and shit like that. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's it's 24. You know what I'm saying? So we could do a lot. There's so much things we could do now. It's not. That's why 
I, I kind of understand uh, drug dealing because it's money that people, you know, they, they get money, I get it. But it's like so many other things that you could do, you know? So many other things you could do versus that. Like, why do America just still just give, give us drugs over and over? Right. When there's so many other things that they could get money off of, you know? Like, what if America just said, fuck it, we're just going to put, we're just going to, dwell in on tech companies and shit like that. <laughs> make uh, make the kids mandatory techs and shit like that, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even remember the question. We got some yeah, we we stuff. We got some stuff. This is something you. we sometimes like to do. Yeah. We stalked your Twitter. Oh, RJ shit. Twitter's a long, <laughs> long, long, a lot of tweets. No, I'm just kidding. I need to delete. I need to delete. <laughs> <laughs> but these are some from kind of recently that I thought maybe we we're, were kind of provoking. I'm going to hand it to you. I want you to read it. You don't need my show. You don't need to reread my shit that I thought in these times. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And oh, we'll fuck. put it up on the screen so you don't oh, need to, fuck. like, worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? What does it say? Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, let me see. <laughs> this is funny, yeah? <laughs> Dang. All right. Y'all telling these artists with no money, no budget to have a rollout. Tell them to go get some money. Go get a job. If you ain't got no hustle, music costs money. No, me. Yeah. I, I still feel that way, though. Yeah, so maybe break it down. Like, it's kind of self-explanatory, but you don't hear that often from people. I feel like people don't give that real advice. Like, music costs money. It's not just anyone can be an artist. You need the talent, but you need the backing. You need the time. Like, wh why did you decide to tweet this? Do you remember where you, what kind of mind state you were in? But first, I, don't, I, want, I want people to know, like, this is not to discourage anybody. Right. I don't speak to discourage. I'm a motivational speaker. So I want to motivate you to, you know, rise. It. Yeah. Get the rise above the, yeah. the norm. Yeah. You know, like the bar, set the bar higher, you know? Right. Um, and that's one of the ways to do it, is having money. Mm -hmm. You know, setting the bar. One person I do like, I admire a lot, right? Uh, he's resting in pieces, Draco. Mm -hmm. um, they tackled that aspect of it. And that's what it took, that's what it takes for money. You know, you gotta have bread to pay for the things you need to pay for. You know what I'm saying? Like, even the money he had, I'm guaranteed it, nigga, probably throw that money into that Drake record. Imagine what that shit do. Right. You know, like, it's just certain things you can do with money. I'm not saying just money just the, you know, the key to life. But it isn't very much so a necessity. Mm -hmm. And as an artist, you don't want to leave yourself uh, f just open mm -hmm. to go for anything. You want to be able to stand on it and be firm about it. Now imagine if artists with these catalogs um, didn't have the money and didn't want to sell their catalog. It's just like they got the money. Or I want to want to sell my catalog. I want more money. I'm not gonna settle for this. You know. Imagine if, um, you know, artists just had you know bread to just you know just pay for people to you know what I'm saying work for them. Right. I know we're doing. I know we're doing this to get money. I get that. I understand that part. But if you don't got no hustle, go get a job. You know, like go. Sometimes you gotta work, you know, for the system. <laughs> Listen, man. We didn't make the system. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's not something that we could just be like, you know, go against all the time. Right. Sometimes you gotta play the game. Sometimes you gotta play the game, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Go get That's a job. That's reality. A lot of people that want to run away from, they just want to look too cool for school all the time and shit you know and it's like all right if you if nobody's hiring all right get on the internet and find something that you could do something you could sell shit nigga you can make wristbands for for a dollar and right. sell them for 10. right you can make rugs 
I'm not mad at people making rugs right That's now. That's true. Just, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Like, Real shit. You, you can make a million. You could go to the store and make some shit and sell it. Real shit, bro. Or, you know what I mean? No, yeah. it's, it's so many things. It's, it's so many things to do in 2024 that you need to, like, use your mind. Exactly. Just use, use your brain. Use your mind, like, instead of just, you know, operating with your heart alone. For sure. I feel like it's also, like, a little bit of entitlement from people. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, because yeah, you allowing like, you are, you allowing yourself to have an employer, right? You know, you allowing yourself to have somebody, you know, pay for your shit. So that means what they pay for, if it's an investment or a loan, they want their money back. Right. You know what I'm saying? If it's a loan, they definitely want their money back. If it's an investment. They, they waiting for they more. they waiting for their shit to crack. They waiting yeah. for some shit to crack off. You know what I'm saying? But it's like I'm not saying to I'm not even saying to you know have a have an employer is the wrong thing. Like I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying go get you some dough instead of just instead of just relying on somebody else to you know make it happen for you. It ain't gonna happen like that. You know what I'm saying? I had to. I did everything in my power except selling my ass. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I did everything. Whatever I had to do, I was going to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I was going to play the game smart. Mm -hmm. It's a chess game, man. Make it happen for yourself. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't be a victim, man. Don't allow yourself to be a victim. I'm talking women. I'm talking men. I'm talking, you know, kids that's coming up in the game. I'm talking all like man, be a boss. But sometimes you might have to be a worker to be a boss. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like, if you don't, if you, I'm saying, look, look at like this, right? You don't got no deal. You don't got nobody, nigga. Uh, no, no major niggas with some major money, major players paying for you. You have this talent. What you gonna do? You just gonna rap all day and just figure like, oh, you know what? I'm about to have a rollout. What rollout? Right. Where? How? Okay, settle down. Go get you some dough. Go get you some paper. Figure it out. Now come with your rollout. Now put the shit. Put money. Imagine if you you drop a promo video and you put and put money into the ads. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's Maybe. another thing. You could just put twenty bucks into some. You know, it doesn't have to be or, a million dollars, but or, just something. Or you, you drop a pro, you, you get a promo. You got a tape coming and you get some posters. Right. And you go, and you print up some posters. And you go put, you got a show coming up, right. right? And you go put up some posters and letting everybody know you got a show at this place right here. This is my show gonna be at. That takes money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it takes, it takes dough. You feel me? Oh yes, there's still so many things you can do without money. Money ain't everything. Where? Right. I heard Fifty Cent say the other day in the interview. He's like, I feel like depression is damn near like a luxury. Like. He's like, you gonna sit around and cry all day? He's like, where are you gonna do that at? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, like, you can't just at all. You can't somebody just gotta around. pay the bills for where you're gonna sit, unless you want to sit on the side of the street, yeah. and that's you know. That's right. So you can't just sit there and soak in your in your in your problems. Sit there and soak in solitude and just be like, oh, it's just gonna be better, better life. No, nah, you gotta you gotta embrace it. You gotta embrace it and tackle it head on. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? That's real. So yeah, shit. We just got one more tweet for you. Uh, that you that you did. When is this? Twenty twenty three. Yeah, this one's recent. That's There's great. a recent one too. This is February twenty twenty three. Let me see it, man. This is dope. You said February twenty two. Twenty three. The fact that hoes come easy is the is this big without an official video is crazy to me. It's my biggest record. Uh, we put money in to get rich. When it came out, we put money in to get rich. We put like a couple bucks in to get rich and we did a West Coast tour. You know what I'm saying? And we fucked up the radios and shit like that. Get Rich went crazy. Uh, I could perform Get Rich in every, in every club in, 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 on the West Coast and it's gonna go crazy. You know what I'm saying? From, from I think, I say like um, a seven year old to a 70 year old, it's gonna feel it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You know? So, but yeah. Hoes Come Easy is bigger than that. Is it really? <laughs> Hoes really? Come Easy is a bigger record than yeah. that. Yeah, wow. Yeah. 
how come you never fun. did a video? Would you ever consider doing a video? Um, well, I was, I was considering it. I was considering it uh, maybe probably like last year. That's funny. Okay. While I was talking about this, uh, last year I was figuring, I was thinking about that. Uh, I don't know. It, now, as big as a record is, it would probably have to be a massive video though. Have now. To be crazy yeah, it got to be some dope ass shit if I was to do it. Um, I don't know. It might make the record go diamond. It really it's, it, it just it just hit gold. Wow, congrats, so, congrats. Yeah, it just hit gold. So that's cool. I, that's actually like I'm actually stoked. I ain't gonna lie. Is that your first plaque? No, I got more. I got plaques. I got other plaques with um a, other artists. Okay. This is my first like plaque features. though. Yeah, yeah this, this is my first, like, solo, solo plaque. You know what I'm saying? It's gotcha. pretty dope. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of streams you have to do to go gold. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like what a hundred yeah. million. I imagine like, uh, I dropped that when I dropped that record. We dropped that record on. Hot new hip hop, really? <laughs> in twenty fourteen, type shit. Yeah, I think that's what it said it, on your Apple Music. Uh, and I saw like one of the comments under that tweet. I don't know who it was, but it it's not on there. But it was like, well, when the drop, people weren't even really dropping videos like that. That's true. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. as simple as everybody. You know, everyone kind of knows what camera dude. Like it's twenty fourteen. Yeah, and different. we didn't know this song was gonna be this big. Right. We know it was tight to us. They're saying hoes come easy. What the fuck? Yeah, like that's not the type of song you The women really love it the most. Yeah. That is crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is crazy, yeah. I was like, damn, they love this shit. You know what I mean? But I don't know. It's a fun record. Um, um, man, it's, it's, it's massive, too. Um, I don't know. We was in a different space. When, um, I actually made that with... I was who the people who was a part of that record would be me, Lemmy, and Mike Wayne. So these guys have been with you since the beginning. Yeah, beginning most definitely. Oh wow, most definitely. They, they play leaving. a role creatively as well, like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, most definitely. Wow. Most definitely. I made that. I made it at first. I made it with uh, in the studio, right? I made it in the studio. Just I think yeah, Sirac was going at that time. Ciroc was Ciroc definitely was going, going crazy. at the time. Ciroc was going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was. We had a bottle of Ciroc and we was just in that motherfucker going crazy. Uh, uh, I had a few different melodies mm -hmm. and Lambs had like that. Lemmy. Lemmy is Lambs. Lambs is Lemmy. Uh, yeah. He had, he liked that melody. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he picked, like, picked that melody. And I, had, I said something else to it. Like something about a party or something like that. And then I took it back home and me and Mike, Mike Wayne, we worked on the project. And Mike, one that was one time when Mike had told me, told me the song got to say it's a party without saying it's a party. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And I was just like, you fucking genius. You know what I'm saying? No, that song is, I mean, turns the fucking yeah. room up. Yeah. And it has been yeah, for I 10 guess. years. It still lights yeah. the room up. Like, for sure. Crazy. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? But um, I love that record, though. Yeah. If it was to be a video, it'd have to be a crazy-ass video. like Some uh, lyrical lemonade shit or something. Uh, like that. Yeah, yeah the, especially what I'm... Yeah, like, the team I'm building now... Right. Uh, I'm house. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on that type of time. I'm on that type of time. Same I want I want to I wanna create... I want us to create our own... Um, uh, Cole Bennett. Our own lyrical exactly. lemonade. You know what I'm saying? Well, Shout out Lyrical yeah. Lemonade though. Shout out Cole Bennett. Oh, yeah. We building that too, bro. And like now doing this interview, doing this photo shoot with you, like you a part of the underground family now. First you know interview saying? ever in yeah. front of the wall. Yeah. That's legendary. Yeah, for real. And bro, like whatever you need ever, you got us for it on camera. You got my word, man. So uh, it's been a super pleasure yeah, working Thanks with you Thanks for sitting today, down bro. for so long too. Bro. Yeah, real uh, shit. We I didn't even know it was that long. Honestly, that's a good interview. <laughs>